It is the 9th of January 2014 and this is Season 2 of Boots on the Ground. I am your host, Gimbal B, and joining me tonight is Seriously Moody. What's up? And Mick Robich. Hey. Took me a second there. Is that all we do? <laughs> no, there's, another, there's a recording. bit more talking left. And that's the show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're, there's a new format stuff happening with Boots on the Ground. It was going way too long. Like, all of season one, it was just like hour and a half to two and a half hours when it really shouldn't have been. And uh, you might have noticed that there's no us on the screen anymore. Like, people made it fairly clear that that wasn't really adding much. So it's just going to be audio only. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can just alt-tab. Like, there's nothing really... Uh, gonna happen on the screen aside from this lovely graphic that I stole from CCP. Uh, right. So yeah, we're going to just talk about a couple of subjects every show um, and keep it to an hour long, hopefully, and yeah. Well, so I guess we'll just get started. Uh, first topic is the leaked drop suit changes. So over the oh. oh I'll keep going so over was it like two or three days ago now uh, some people found all the new drop suit changes coming on CC and yeah. like it's all they're doing everything over it seems and they're adding all of the drop suits like they all have bonuses and stuff mapped out so I think it will probably be the next big update that this is all coming in. And yeah, yeah I'm, ex I'm excited to see the uh, the heavy rolls filled out more. Yeah, I read on the uh, forums, uh, I think it was Logi Bro who said it, um, that they'll release like official notes about it in a week or so. Like, I read it today. I could try and find the post somewhere, but I think they're going to release like official stuff about it. So yeah. it's just going to be the crystal ball looking through Sissy. But for like people who don't really know about this, or just for me, so I can be filled in with the conversation, what are uh, happening with drop suits? Like, what changes are we talking about here? So, as far as I can tell, it's all the bonuses are getting changed. Uh, they haven't said anything about slot layouts or anything like that. I imagine the logies are getting a different change to slot layout, considering what their bonuses are going to be like, but. Yeah, yeah I, I read a comment somewhere. Uh, Logi Bro said something about uh, that the like CPU and slot layouts. They like they haven't released those changes, but he kind of made it sound like they are going to rebalance like slot layouts and CPU and PG, which makes a lot yeah. of sense. It's interesting. Yeah, I think thing the days of um, Kaldari Logi being the best suit in the game is. <laughs> Probably going to be over fairly soon. Thank God. Kadari Master Race reporting in. <laughs> yeah, the good old was it five highs and four lows? Jesus. Yeah, I think those are. Over. I mean, it's been nerfed already. I mean, the only reason I kind of skilled into it is because it looks bright yellow, and that was like amazing. You could stand I missed out the on the banana suit. and everything. The, uh, the yeah, the banana, banana, banana suit. One. That was my favorite one. <laughs> are you? Yeah, I used to wear it all the time, and then when it got nerfed, like, the color nerf, it was terrible. So what was yeah. the banana suit? It was, really... it was, it was the, the uh, or the advanced one? I think it was the Orem Logi suit. Okay. I could be wrong here. Yellow. It was literally all yellow. It just I looked like I a giant. I think I have a photo of it somewhere, but, but it's amazing. <laughs> it's Yeah, you just think of, like, your average... Kaldari suit, and someone at CCP was playing around with Microsoft Paint. It's like, oh, holy shit, I can fill in, like, colors when I click on it, and it clicks, and the whole suit's filled in, like, yellow. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, we'll put it in the game anyway. Rogue comes along, like, what is this? Oh, no, no, it's meant to be... <laughs> it's meant to do it like this. Oh, fair enough. Oh, is it a bit like the, um... Oh, is it the Quaif suit? Used to yeah. used to leave a trail of like sparkles behind it and stuff like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Holy shit! 
Oh, that was like back that in like... Chromazone, I think. That's hilarious. I hope there's a video of this because if that's Sparkly purple true, suit. why did they remove it? Oh, I think it's, it's just bright us, pink now, just... I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing different about the suit. If we had sparkles, that would be amazing. Just imagine that. You have the whole team of, like, people in the lodgy and heavy suits and, like, normal assaults running around the map chasing after this guy in a quite scout suit who's leaving a trail of sparkles behind. <laughs> and the player's like, dear God, how are they finding me so quickly? <laughs> oh, let us not talk about yeah. Chromazone, though. It is a silly time. Yep. Um. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just go into these changes, and I'll just yeah. do it by race, because that's what this person has organized it by, and I don't want to have to scroll too much. So I guess the first one is Amar Assault Skill. Uh, so all of the Assault Skill, or Assault Bonuses, now let me try that again, all of the Assault Suits are getting the same top bonus, which is the 2% uh, light weapon rate of fire per level. So they really want like people to just like do more damage with these things. So I'm wondering what your thoughts on like that bonus alone is. I like rate Obviously of fire so is kind of like I feel like it would like kind of break a couple weapons. Like uh, like it would and it would make certain weapons almost unmanageable. Like the full auto combat rifle is going to be really really hard to manage even with like a 10% rate of fire increase cuz you're going to go like you're gonna blow through your clip in like no time. Where like other weapons, they don't really see too much improvement from it. But I saw somewhere that uh, somebody was saying that it works out so the rate of fire bonus works out to where it cancels out the sentinels bonus for resistance. Oh, uh, just gotta do the math quickly uh, on that. So no, actually, would it like work with? Sorry. Okay. Would it work with um, the TAC ARs, like the rate of fire being increased, or would it just be for, like, you know, normal assault weapons, like the normal AR without any fancy scope? Well, the TAC AR does have a rate of fire. It's just, yeah. it's limited by your ability to Yeah, I know that, that but, like, yeah, but CCP's had, like, trouble in the past. Uh, trouble in the past? <laughs> Tr trouble in the past. <laughs> yeah, trouble in the past with um, people... I think it was the modded controllers or something. The rate of fire yeah. for the TAC AR was just insane. Yeah. But then again, you also don't see TACs anymore. <laughs> I rarely see a TAC on the field. I tried using one the other day, actually, and I was like, this is worse than a combat rifle, and immediately yep. switched back to using a combat rifle. Yep. <laughs> I think a lot I of know, people I use it just like... for, like, nostalgia. Yeah. Back in my day, we used to be able to mod our controllers where we could have over <laughs> an insane rate of fire. And the government came and took it all away. But, yeah. I mean, I'm interested to see how that interacts with, like, the plasma cannon. Ooh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. But that, the plasma cannon more, like, suffers from the reload problem. Yeah. Rather than rate of fire. So, yeah, the plasma cannon wouldn't even see a buff then, would it? No, I don't think so. What about the flaylock? It's for only light weapons. Oh. Well, that's disappointing, but also uh, a sigh of relief for me from that. I guess mass drivers as well. Like, it affects pretty much everything. Sniper... Oh god, tactical sniper rifles. Oui. <laughs> oui. Oh, I can I'm imagine it is. It's... Maybe... I don't know how the swarm launcher would interact with that. Yeah, because you have the lock-on time, and then you have the the delay between shots. Would that affect the delay between shots? Bit, not much. So, maybe? I don't know. Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see, hmm. and maybe we'll get some clarification on that at some point. But it seems like a good change, I guess. Like, if they want assaults yeah. to do more damage. It's more, yeah, it's more of an assault-oriented bonus, which is what the suits need. Yeah, cause... yeah. Because at the moment you have like assault sh suits being like shunned in favor of lodgy suits. Yep. Well, my experience anyway. Okay. Well, I guess assaults are actually going to be viable as like the damage dealers now, which is cool. Uh, I guess we'll move on to the second bonus on this suit, 
This is the Amara specific one, which is a 5% rate of armor repair modules per level. Ooh. That's nice. So it gets a Logi bonus. Isn't that what the <laughs> uh, the Amara Logi bonus is now? The 5% repair? Yeah. So yeah, they're basically just taking that. So that's good for like it's running and gunning, I guess. Yeah, I know a lot of Amar people are not happy about it. <laughs> but me. No. I mean, I'm kind of curious because uh, if you look at the Galente bonus, that's the five percent bonus to armor plate, and I'm kind of wondering why it's that way around. Yeah, because I like I don't play Eve. I've played it a little bit, but a lot, like a lot of people have said that, like the way that Galente and Amar are balanced in here are kind of backwards. Hmm. But even from like a like forgetting Eve for a second, like yeah. Galente have the shorter range weapons, mm -hmm. like the shotgun and the blaster rifle. Mm -hmm. uh, surely they would need the extra speed from uh, like having reps instead of plates to make up mm -hmm. for that. Well, maybe that's how like they like. They kind of see you doing it. Is like with the plate bonus, you would equip less plates and more reppers, maybe. Hmm. Or maybe make ferro hmm. scale plates viable. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like they favor more like run and gun style, because like the yeah. shotgun especially is just you pop out fire once, and then. Yeah, like it doesn't seem like a very good plate weapon. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what other changes are there as well, apart from the suits, or is that it? Uh, I'll keep going on the list of suits. So yeah, there's quite a few. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll just finish up the assaults. Actually, go by assault or suit type as opposed to race. So the Kaldari assaults. 5% bonus to shield extender modules. So that's going to be nice. Kaldari with 5 shield extenders each then, I guess? <laughs> it's pretty much like my basic fit at the moment. I don't have enough skill points for like a shield recharge, a recharger, so it's just all shield extenders at the moment. Hmm. On my basic uh, Kaldari suit, got the proto one as well, which makes it even worse. All buffer, no regen. <laughs> yep. I have to basically rely on a Logi being near me, so I can just have like that little bit of armor repair just in case. Yeah. You know, I pop out and like my shields haven't regained, and I'm like dead instantly. But yeah, it's certainly be interesting seeing what um, the changes bring. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what people try out as well. Like, I wonder if people are actually going to start using regen more. Just have a couple of shield extenders. Or there's those mm -hmm. special ones now, which... Because the regular ones affect shield regen, don't they? The uh, yeah, no clue. regulators or energizers and rechargers? Because regulators uh, do keep No, just the extenders. Delay. Like, the current shield extenders, like, increase the delay, I think, to yeah. recharge. Yeah, they... Do, uh, between 3 and 7% or whatever. Some of them do 3, some of them do 7. I don't or... run Kaldari, so, like, this is... Yeah, old. I'm Minmatar, so I shield tank. I don't pay attention Annoying. to the stats, so... <laughs> I just shoot stuff. Yeah, same. Okay, well, we'll move on, because, like, I guess it's it's a very Kaldari bonus, I have to say that. Yeah. But we'll move on to... Since you mentioned shooting stuff to the Minmatar assault bonus, which is a five percent to damage bonus of damage modifier modules per level, so that's yeah, not a five percent damage bonus, but it's a bonus to the damage modules bonus. Yeah, so that'll bring what is it? You'll end up getting like twelve percent out of a uh, out of a complex instead of ten. Yeah, so or whatever. And a half. So that's it's a nice so they're pretty chunk much of trying damage. to make. Yeah, Minmatar are going to be the glass cannons, I guess, which is kind of what they are now. There's no point like giving bonuses to shield extenders or like armor, uh, complex armor plates because the whole suits are made, held together by duct tape anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> You're going to die anyway. I kind of, like, I don't know, I'm going to kind of miss my sidearm bonus, but 
whatever. It's all right. I, think, I love my SMGs. I think Minmatar Assault <laughs> is going to be the new sniper suit of choice. Probably, yeah. People trying to squeeze out all that little extra damage. Yeah. Yeah. So, wait, so have they... What are the changes for the Minmatar Scout then? Because you usually see like, people in scout suits running sniper fits. Uh, that's... So would the scouts be... Do you just want to go into the scouts? Yeah, we'll then? just go into scouts, and we'll start with the Mimitar <laughs> one then. So scout the worst suit bonus. Experience. Oh, whatever. Scout suit <laughs> bonus, ten percent to uh, Paragrid CPU cost of cloak field per level. So. Oh ooh. yeah, cloaks. I think that's a reduction. Yeah. They worded that kind of poorly. Oh, um, yeah. Actually, yeah, all of the bonus ones that affect like reduction seem. A bit backwards, but because I'm not entirely sure if it's like a ten percent, like if you're reloading something ten percent faster, or if it's like ninety percent reload speed. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, because yeah. those are like two actually different values. Yeah. But uh... anyway, so that's like a cloak field thing. And they actually did talk about the cloak field, and we'll get to that later. But the yeah, logic bro posted about that as well. He made yeah. it extra clear on the forums. But the Mimitar scout bonus is the melee and Nova knife damage per level. Yeah, as of right now, it's not changing, which I have. I have a cute. I have a few gripes with just because the melee is pretty useless. I like the Nova knife uh, bonus, but like the melee is a pretty useless bonus as. Like, even maxed out, you do less damage than, like, a heavy. Less damage than a commando with melee. So, like, they they give you this bonus to melee, but it doesn't really do anything for you. Yeah. Like, you could go for, I think the, oh, what is it? I know someone who actually does, like, melee stuff, and, like, the Mimitar Scout suit is not the suit he picks. Just because it doesn't have enough no. high slots. No. Like, you can do... The Commando can go, like, almost up to 600 in melee. Mimitar Assault can go, like, up to, like 500 or something like that. Uh, Mimitar Assault goes to, like, 650-ish, if you have all highs with damage mods. Insane. Yeah, it is pretty nuts. Although you have no health when you have that. And no health whatsoever? Pretty much. Because you don't have that many lows, so... I don't know. But, like... Glass fist. Nova knives are pretty good though. I've been using them recently, and they do kill they people good. who stand still. Yep. With the uh, with when you get the bonus, like when the Mimitar Scout, when you max it out, like you don't have to charge as much, and you can hit people without doing charge shots, so you can hit them like on the move easier. Hmm. But uh, hopefully, as they make that hit detection a bit better. On YouTube. Yep. Yeah, you you like to kill people with Nova Knives, and you're much better at it than I am. <laughs> I actually, I watched one of your videos the other day, like Nova Knifing, I was like, okay, I'll give this a try, how hard could it be? I swear to god, my kill death Famous ratio. last words. Took a <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're entertaining, yeah. but they're not for everybody. I only, yeah. I mainly use them for things that are still, they're great for clearing equipment. Yeah. Because they yeah. one-shot everything, and they're great for people hacking points. Yeah. That's pretty much what you gotta start out with when you're when you're Nova knifing is just try to only go for stationary targets and then you can move on to mo moving targets. So, Which is significantly harder. Yeah. Find a stationary target first. I guess the one thing about this is if you see a Minmatar scout, you know exactly what he's gonna do. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Although that does leave the Especially opportunity of surprise. Yeah. No, especially when he has a tag above him, like, Moody. Like, <laughs> yeah. Me and Mr. Mustard, you pretty much know exactly what we're running. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we'll move yeah. on from the Mimitar Scout. The knife of choice. Uh, but we'll go to Galante then, go back up the list. 5% uh, drop suit scan radius bonus, and 5% reduction to scan profile per level. So... Galante are going to be the much better, like, scout, scout. So you're going to be better at sneaking around and you're going to be better at finding people. 
Yeah, they're they're actually going to be like the most stealthy of them because they actually keep the uh, the reduction to scan the scan profile, which is what the current scout bonus is. Hmm. So I guess uh, hmm. I think I'll put a shotgun on one of those. I don't know. I've been running Galante Scout recently. They're good. They're really good. They are really good. And you can plate them, which is great. Because you're sneaky and tanky at the same time. Yep. They're much better for shotgunning. They can stay in a fight longer. Yeah. But, I mean, they aren't really changing that much. Like, I mean, they're nope. going to get the cloak, but... Uh, that's pretty much it. So, they're pretty much staying the same. So, we'll go to Kaldari. And this is the new one. Yep. Uh, and this is a bonus to firing cloak cost. So... Um, oh, and the uh, Mar ones like to do a cloaking as well. So I guess we'll just... Well, when we get to cloaking, I guess we'll explain those bonuses. Or do you want to talk about cloaks okay. now? Because I think we kind of have to. Yeah, Yeah, might as well. Seeing right. as we're already on the topic of light, the suits. Okay. Yeah. So I'll go to the cloaking post. And uh, this was by Remnant. I think he's the guy who's actually working on this himself. As opposed to like just a um, community manager. So it goes as follows. The cloak field is a piece of equipment. Uh, when selected, the cortex is raised and you press fire to activate it. I think cortex is just like a thing that equipment is in thing. your hand. Yeah. Once activated, it goes away and your weapon is raised. You can switch to other weapons, equipment while cloaked. Your cloak you cloak, the amount of shimmer is increased as you move. So standing still, you'll be nigh invisible, but when moving, you'll be noticeable to an extent. I imagine that changes depending on how fast you're moving to. Yeah. Not totally probably sure. um, the level of the gear as well you're using. Like if it's proto, it would probably be much better. Yeah. When cloaked, you obviously have no chevron or health bars, so people can't just like look over you and see how much health you have. Uh, <laughs> But the enemy reticle will flash red if you run past it. So that's that'll be interesting. Yeah, so you can still be seen basically if you actually run in front of someone. I guess you're going to see a lot be of people just. Though, they... So I was just going to say it'll be like hilarious seeing how many people are just like spinning around in circles hoping to get <laughs> just the red. firing wildly. Oh, just like waiting for the red oh, to appear. It'll be like... Yeah. No, it would be character. like, um, you remember when that glitch happened when some people would turn invisible? Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I had this one situation when this happened to me. Like, you know the map with the little outpost with the mushroom thing where people put yeah. their equipment and stuff sometimes? I was outside the gates there and there was this, like, I think there must have been a full squad of stuff. Because you know how everyone captures the points and then goes to defend the gates mm -hmm. and stop people getting in, like Aerial Denial. Yeah. I died, but then someone revived me. And because of that, I somehow became invisible, and I couldn't see my gun, but I could still kill people and shoot at them. Yeah. So when I ran out of ammo as well, you could just melee people, and you have like these whole <laughs> squads like looking around, firing in different directions, trying to hit me. And then you, <laughs> it's just like hey, you're around here somewhere. Together. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's the most hilarious thing. I can only imagine that joy coming back when the cloak hits, just like a more conserved level because you know you have to be careful with the shimmer and light not to deplete the cloak but in short the ultimate character yeah. to cloaking devices is Beyblade <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, imagine a bit more... if um... oh, sorry oh, what do you think active scanners would do to it do you think that would affect the cloaking somehow or uh, they did comment that if you get scanned it did like you become decloaked Oh, so I think this is why well, scouts are going to be the better you. ones with cloaks because they'll be able to beat scanners, so they won't get decloaked. In theory, I yeah, I can see um, cloaks instantly going away now because it's the average domination match or faction warfare when it's a really intense match. The amount of people use active scanners, and just when it says you have been scanned, you get that repeated so many times. I think the cloak will just not work. I think they're yeah. going to change scan mechanics, though. Yeah. I think oh, they kind of have to. I didn't to. know about this. Please yeah, they do. 
But uh, it'll be interesting to see how that all works. Um, so there's a bit more, I think. Uh, once deactivated or it runs out, it'll start to recharge. So there's like a recharge thing to it. Um, uh, you can mm. also deactivate it by selecting it and pressing fire again. Firing a weapon while cloaked will rapidly deplete the cloak field. So you could probably fire multiple shots while cloaked uh, for certain weapons. But like, there's like a bar of, and basically that gets depleted as you fire. And certain weapons do it more like a single shot from a sniper rifle will decloak. I imagine the shotgun is probably exactly the same. Yeah. Uh, and you can only fit one cloak at a time, because, yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, like, lodges would just dominate. Be invisible all the time. <laughs> yeah, be invisible, and then you'd just see, like, this repair tool trail following around a fat heavy. <laughs> it's like, seriously, why are you repairing me when you're invisible? You don't need to be invisible. They can't shoot me. So They don't know I'm here. Looking at like the bonuses, the Kaldari get a reduction to firing cloak cost, so they can fire more while cloaked. Uh, so I have a feeling like Kaldari snipers are going to be... That makes sense. That kind of makes... It, it kind of gives the scout sniper more of a role. Really puts it into that, so you really can like keep moving and firing, or like get closer to the action and be a more useful sniper, or marksman. Hmm. Hmm. But I really, I don't know how I feel about firing while cloaked, I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know, it will be kind of annoying. It depends, like, what the, like, how much you can fire or how much damage you'll put out while firing. I'll be okay with it if you can, like, see the, um, the smoke and stuff from the weapon. Yeah. Or, like, the bullets. Instead of them yep. being invisible, then you'll be able to triangulate the position using, you know, where the trace it's coming from. Yeah, I think I think the biggest thing, if it like I think what it'll really be is like the it'll give you that small like quarter second to half second edge that you'll really need to get the jump on somebody like especially if you are a scout. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'm interested to see how that all works out. Uh, the as I far can, as like the sniping can... thing goes, they're gonna Kaldari is gonna be the one with the most high slots, so you're probably. Depending on how many highs it has, I think it will probably have four. Going by the logic that they have five slots total, and the Mimitar is the three-two layer. Yeah. So like a sniper with four damage mods, and but yeah, it will mm. be interesting. And the Amar is five percent reduction to cloak field cooldown per level. So I imagine that's the time it takes for the cloak to charge back up when you're not using it. I can see, like, with the cloak, I can see some hilarious things happening, though. Like, just imagine this, right? You have a scout, like, running along, sees a group of enemies all bunched up near an objective. Though, using his weapon would deplete the cloak instantly, and he'll probably be dead. But instead, he pulls out a core locust grenade, or some remote explosives, and stands right up next to them and detonates. Imagine the tears. <laughs> Uh, like that's that's another thing too is like uh like scouts are getting these cloaks which are an equipment so I I don't know I think scouts will end up getting two equipment slots because otherwise you'll be like by fitting a cloak you kind of like decrease a lot that you can do as a scout especially if you're like sneaking in or like throwing uplinks down or actually sabotaging but like if you yeah. if you do have like two equipment slots then you could do things like cloak in throw down a remote but that's entirely if scouts get a second equipment slot like they did in Chrome, or whatever, like the B-Series or whatever it was that had the second equipment slot. That sounds very overpowered. Yeah. yeah. Well, a second equipment slot. Yeah. I feel like yeah. having to choose between yeah. the two seems like a better... Yeah. Well, I was, yeah, thinking about it though, like, if you do have a second equipment slot, you could have, like, a scout with a cloak and an active scanner going around, like, scanning people, then going invisible, and, like, stalking the enemy in a way. But with only one equipment slot and just having a cloak, having to use, like, word of mouth instead of, like, getting your squad, yeah. like, the position tree laid using the scanner. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you could be the guy who says, scan here, as opposed to, uh, like, doing it yourself. 
Yeah. It's a massive horde of heavies coming towards you. But I guess looking at the Amar suit bonus, it seems like that's the more combat one. So like you can fight and then your cloak will recharge quicker so you can get out and then fight again. Yeah, mm. the, uh, Amar scouts will also have, if they're anything like the Amar, the rest of the Amar suits, they'll have the longest stamina as well. So. Hmm. So I guess we'll just have so, to wait and see. From, but... Yeah. Yeah. Apart from the scout suits and such, is there any, any more suits been announced? Like, um. Oh, all of them. The long teased the... heavy suits. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, the I guess. Wait, racial set. Um. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is, like, pilot suits haven't been announced, but uh, that's <laughs> probably coming like way later. Never. <laughs> Oh, one day. The tanks that they are at the moment, like, you probably won't see pilot suits until we get, like, some sort of aircraft that aren't a massive, um, I don't know what's the word for a massive failure, like the assault dropship, uh, dropship was. Mm, I guess. I don't know. But we'll move on to the suits that have been announced. So we'll go a Marlogy. So that's, uh, all logistic suits are getting a 5% reduction to power grid and CPU cost of equipment. That was previously a Galente bonus. It's, well, mm -hmm. Was it the same percentage? Uh, I think it is. Yeah. So that's going to everybody. So Galente suits are no longer going to be the suit of choice if you want to use like equipment spam or anything to do with equipment, really. <laughs> a proper logic. Yeah. So they're actually making everything proper logic. Uh, and the Amar is getting a... 10% reduction to drop up link spawn time and a 2 plus max spawn count per level. So that's. Marlaji is all big in PC. That's for oh, sure. Yeah, everybody. Oh, I guess it depends. I think they're going to have to change drop up links then. Yeah, because that'll bring like the uh, the reduction time, like almost to a couple of seconds, like a couple, like a one or two second spawn on like proto up links. Yeah, and like the Amar would have, like even if it keeps its three equipment slots, that's still like six drop-up links that have really low spawn time. Yeah. Speaking of um, equipment and stuff, has anyone tested out Dust since they put in that um, little fix for the equipment spam? Uh, I haven't done it. That was today, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was at downtime. Yeah. I, uh, no. I only played a round of uh, Ambush earlier, so I don't know. I'll need to try that out, we but I haven't had a chance yet. battles to test it for science. Yeah, hell, even just Faction Warfare. Or like yeah. even regular skirmish, like sometimes yeah. people do that. Domination, pro actually. games, quote quote. Yep. But yeah, uh, I guess Amar Logi is going to be. The ah, uh, I mean they're going to have to change drop up links, really. Yep. I think they're going to rebalance all equipment, especially since if you go through the rest of these, like they all have. Yeah, I mean the Caldari balance. one is uh, plus ten percent nanohive max and five percent uh supply rate and repairment per level so like i imagine grenades are getting changed then because oh man <laughs> oh man <laughs> kaldari logi like suit of choice even if uh like they have to just play completely differently just and that would bring uh we're combi triage hives are what 70 reps per second now and that would give them an extra 25 percent yeah i don't know what the math is on that but it's quite a bit It'd be good for them nano hives and stationary reps yep that's like 87 percent or something just like trying to do that quickly but that is crazy so i guess nano hives mm -hmm. are getting changed uh, Yay. I think like hopefully grenades get changed as well. I mean they aren't as prevalent now, but I haven't played yeah. PC in a while. They were super spammy there for a while. Yeah. And like I think they probably still are fairly spammy, but honestly, like I don't really know how that all works right now, so But yeah, I guess like they have to change equipment because everything seems equipment spam. Mm-hmm. Uh, Galente Logi is active scanner, so I guess they want people to, they want the Logi to be the scanner people, and this is a huge bonus. Like, yeah, it is twenty five. Like 
if you're maxed out, it's twenty five percent to a scanner precision. So yep. nothing could escape mm. a logi. No, nothing could escape a proto uh, scanner on a Galente logi. Yeah, as of right now, like unless they change the uh, the profile of scouts, like a Minmatar scout would not be able to be like a Galente logi running a scanner right now yeah. with and this bonus. A visibility duration bonus as well, like fifty percent. So you scan pro- someone and they're all, like oh, they're just up there forever for like a minute. <laughs> Just chase them down. Oh, it'll be like uh, putting an attack order on something. Yeah. Just follows you for ages. Oh, so yeah, like they, they, I think at the very least, all these changes are revealed that they're changing everything. Yeah. Because I would not want to play Dust if they left. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah. Or not want to play an infantry game of Dust. Yeah. Uh. And yeah, like we'll look, go to the, like the Minbatar one. This has actually had like a bunch of people. This say, is oh, my favorite one. I love it too, but people have been like, "Oh, like you've made Minbatar terrible." No, they've made them awesome. Yeah, <laughs> in uh, my that's... opinion, Impl- implying Minbatar weren't already terrible. <laughs> I don't know. People are upset about the hacking thing, and I have pro. But, then, but those Minmatar, are people but... who are running the Minbatar Lodgy like a scout. Those yeah. are people running it damped and speed tanked, and like. Ninja hacking stuff, hmm. which is like what's a scout? Yeah, and normally what scouts do. And yeah, this is like a ten percent bonus to repair tool range, and like a five percent bonus to repair tool amount per level. So it's like fifty and twenty-five per, uh, respectively. The reason why this is my favorite one is after this change comes, I will be able to walk up to a Minmatar Lodgy and know that he has a rep tool. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's true. Because they're like rep tools are like the best equipment that everybody shares because like they give out so many war points. So you'll be able to run up to a Minmatar Lodgy and know that he'll probably rep you. That's true. Actually, I do like yeah. that. I never really thought of that. Like you'll know what people yeah. are actually using going by their mm-hmm. suit. And everybody has lots of equipment slots as well, so they'll have other stuff. But yeah. But if that is see, the one, yeah. like that, that is the one like shining thing that I am very happy about. Because like whenever you can't like, whenever you need reps, there's always a lot. It's like no, I don't have a rep tool. But now you'll be able to run up to a Mimitar Lodgy, and know that he probably has a rep tool. That's true. Oh, the best, the best Very joke I've heard about stand. this. The best joke I've heard about this is that redline repairing is now going to be a thing. Oh God. <laughs> Standing in the red line while repping a guy from a hundred meters out. <laughs> Cause that's I think you can do that. Yeah. Oh, what's like, the longest uh, rep? Uh forty meters, I think, is what the um So yeah, that's like sixty public meters version. Away. Yeah, like you'll be able to stand a good distance away, which is actually kinda good because like if you're in a Minmatar suit, like no like unless a Lodgy suit is speed tanking, like they can't keep up with you. Hmm. Like, you move too fast, so it's, like, hard to have, like, a Lodgy repping you if, like, you're in a Mimitar Assault because you just move too fast. So now they can, like, stay back a little bit, or, like, you can push out a little bit further and continue to be repped. But it also makes the core rep tool, like, like up to 200 reps per second, I think. That's pretty good. Actually, that's insane. But damage is so high right now, (laughs) it kind of has to be, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Actually... Yeah, because if you're that far away, like, if your heavy's getting shot by, like, a guy with a blast... I call it a blast rifle. I think they're going to rename them, but... Rare rifle. Uh, well, if he's getting shot well, by, like, an assault rifle, you're going to be so far away that that is going to... You're going to be, like, massively out of that guy's optimal. Yeah. So you can safely repair them from a distance. Well, like, yep. I mean, you'll still be able to get shot at, but, like, that'll do, like, 20% damage to you, or 30% damage yeah. to you. Yeah, you can heal from a more safe distance and not put yourself like in the line of fire as much. Which is cool. I like it. Mm-hmm. And uh, people were asking why Mimitar, and I think uh, the Mimitar is actually fast enough that it can walk at the same speed a heavy can sprint. Yeah. So you yep. can repair a guy while... Well, at least and with also, the AMR, but... rep tools are Mimitar. Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of weird, because they shield the tank, kind of, in EVE, but yeah. whatever. 
Oh, it, it makes sense, I guess. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I'll go with it. <laughs> so yeah, logies are all going to be equipment-based now. Like, they're still going to have fighting power. Yeah. But, like, they really want logies to be logies. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Because up until this point, they haven't really been, for the most part. No. Nope. Oh. Logies were the assault suit. We have a few of the added extras. Yeah, yep. pretty much. There were assaults with more slot layer. And more power grid and CPU. But yeah, yeah, I guess speaking of heavies, we'll go on to the Sentinels then. Because yeah, those are the guys you're going to yeah, be repairing. So this is like the... So the Sentinel bonus for everybody is a 5% damage, or uh, resistance to blast damage. So that's, I think, grenades and REs and proxies, and I don't know if uh, the Probably mass anything driver... With splash. Yeah, I'm not sure about the mass driver, and I'm not sure about Flaylock. But I guess? It would make sense, I guess. So that's a huge change, because suddenly, oh, yeah. like, I think that a sentinel could survive REs. Yeah, now they can. Like uh now a uh not right now a sentinel can survive one RE. After this it'll take like definitely two. <laughs> Maybe three. Depending on how much HP they get. Hmm. Hmm. And that's a resistance to both shield and armor. Mm hmm Because all the other bonuses are like specific to either of those, but this is just... Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess I don't know, like, it seems like a really huge change, but I don't really know how that's going to play out. Yeah. They'll definitely be they'll I... definitely be the tanks that they should be, soaking up damage. Hmm. With the heavy machine gun changes as well, things will get really interesting. Yes. When I say changes, I mean the changes that have already happened. Yeah. yeah. They're going to be the first in. Like, when you want to try and breach somewhere that's, uh, like, ridiculously guarded. About, like, guarded. 10 behind him. Yeah. <laughs> really far behind him. From that. Yeah. <laughs> Looking like he has a bunch of tentacles spewing from his back. Out of repair beams. And, uh, I guess we'll just skim through all the other resist changes. So that's member target, shield resistance to laser, and... Uh, armor resist to hybrid blaster, so that's the assault rifle. I don't know if that counts as a shotgun as well. Hmm, I think it would. And I really, really don't know if that counts as plasma cannon. Hmm. But I'm it definitely sure. affects the AR. Yeah. And it's kind of weird that it's a armor resist to the hybrid blaster, because those do bonus to shield and yeah. less to armor. They have them, like, split up, so, like, you gain resistance when it hits. It makes it sound like as soon as you hit it, like, hit your armor, it'll give you that extra resistance, which is kind of weird, because it already does not much to armor. Hmm. Well, I guess 90% still... Yeah. 90% of a lot is still a lot. Yep. Uh, Galente is 3% armor resist to uh, hybrid railgun and 2% armor to projectile. Uh, Kaldari is 3% resistance to hybrid blaster and that's shield actually as well. Shield resist to hybrid blaster and shield resist to laser and Amar is armor resist to projectile weapons and 2% uh, shield resist to hybrid blaster weapons. Hmm. So Kaldari are definitely going to be shield tanked. Galante are definitely going to be armor tanked. And Mimitar dual tanked. Same thing with Amar. Amar, yeah. And Interesting. Yeah. There's something weird as well, like, the Galente typically use a uh, hybrid blaster, and the Minmatar get a bonus against that, despite being their allies. I find that a bit weird. Yeah. I think it's more of, like, the fighting range. I think they tried to balance them within the fighting range, rather than allies and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. That's just the way I see it. But it's nice, like it like heavies are gonna like sentinels are gonna be 
like scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna have you're gonna have to like really put firepower into killing them. Yeah, like you're not gonna be able to take them down one v one unless that guy is probably bad. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing them become like the bulldozers of Payday Two. I haven't played Payday Two. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> what? We'll take your word for okay. that. Okay. Spec Ops the line. <laughs> I haven't spec played Spec Ops the line. No. Oh my god, dude! I heard it's good though. I should play it. But... Yes, and they are, they're well. going like, to be very you, scary. Yeah, I'll give you an idea. Like when they like in uh, Payday Two, there's this thing called a bulldozer, which is like a guy in a massive bomb the defu- uh, bomb defusible suit. And once he comes in, it's like a tank in Left 4 Dead. Everyone turns their fire onto him, and if you're caught with him alone, you're dead. So uh-huh. I'm looking forward to seeing heavies like literally become that. That changes the situation immediately. Yeah. Good. Yeah, they're yeah. just going to be ridiculously tanked. And I love the, uh, like, you actually, if you have, like, a forge gun as a heavy now, if a tank starts shooting at you, you're going to have, like, a bit more of a chance to actually fire at the tank before it can. Yeah. Yeah. Because the current bonus, and it's only, like, the Amar is the only one that has a Sentinel right now. The current bonus is, like, heat damage from weapons doesn't, like, hurt you as much. And it's like you're like you. It's a light weapon, and you only take it if you make a mistake. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, like they're gonna be give, walking cause, tanks. Cause the Sentinel thing says that it can go toe to toe with vehicles, right? So I think this will definitely give them a chance to actually fill that out. Yeah. And yeah, if you have an HMG and you're at close range with someone. I wouldn't want to be that person that's a close range nope. for the head. <laughs> nope. Even even now, like the HMG is getting pretty scary. Once they uh, get these resists, it'll. Oh, uh, you'll that... definitely need a couple of guns on a on a heavy to take it down. The improvements they made to the HMG. Oh my god! Oh, they amazing. needed it. Yeah, I actually started playing heavy again because it's fun. Yeah, I first started like playing when I got a bit bored, like before one point seven. 1.6 I think it was and then I stopped for a bit because they were useless in a way Yeah. and since the heavy machine gun came back I was like oh wow this is amazing and I've actually been putting skill points into the heavy just so I can like have fun with the HMG yeah yeah I run a standard uh, Amar with a Republic HMG sometimes and it's a lot of fun yeah it's fantastic I wonder what um, you know r- racial weapons they'll add like alternatives for the HMG because the HMG is like a Mimitar weapon. Yeah. But it's on an Amar Heavy. Which yeah. doesn't really make much sense. <laughs> or yeah. if you want to get them, you have to do... Like in Faction Warfare, if you want to play Sentinel, you have to play for like both sides, which seems a bit yeah. weird. Yeah. I think the the HMG on the, uh, the Mimitar will be definitely better too because it'll be a lot quicker. Yeah. So it'll be able to close that distance. Which yeah. the Amar has kind of trouble doing right now. Speaking of um, like playing on both sides, I think yeah, CCP really like pushing towards people wanting to be mercenaries. No, if you want to be a mercenary heavy, you can't play on one side. You need to play on both. <laughs> yeah, that is a bit bizarre. But anyway, we'll move on to the commando skill or suits even. Um, so the commando suit bonus is going to stay the same with the uh, reload speed. So 25% reduction to reload speed on all light weapons. Ooh. Oh, and it's actually specifically light weapons now, before it was everything. So, uh, Minmatar 1 is going to reload those combat rifles. And those are reloading like under a second or something now, it's insane. Yeah. But the bonuses to all four races are to do with their perspective light weapons. So the Amar gets bonus to... Laser white weapons, uh, Kaldari get a bonus to uh, hybrid railgun light weapons, Galente blasters, and Mimitar projectile and explosive, which includes mass driver. So. Hmm. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, they really want those guys to be like the. sit at the back and do damage, I guess. Yeah. Definitely support fire. Hmm. Wait, so this is the commando suits again? Just... Yeah. 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 Sorry, I zoned out for a bit. 
yeah. yeah, it should be interesting because Commando suits, they're almost at the moment, they're like the glass cannons, sort yeah. of, in a way. Yeah, you don't want to put one on the front line. Yeah. No. Yeah, these like will make them, like, really, really good support suits. They'll be able to, like, you know... Like, right now, like, uh, like unless you're, like, hanging out with a Lodgy, like, the commando suit is kind of like, meh. <laughs> so right now it'll really, like... Like, after these changes, it'll, it'll definitely help put out a lot more damage and stuff while hanging out back and supporting assaults from behind. Now you can do even more damage with your two swarm launches. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if the uh, Mimitar, because it says explosive, and Swarm Launchers do explosive damage, I wonder if yeah. that actually counts. I imagine it would. Yeah, because the, uh, the Mimitar don't have a uh, an EV weapon. And they're the Mass Driver, which also yeah. gets a bonus from that. Yeah. And those actually hit vehicles pretty hard. Wouldn't uh, yeah. remote, remote explosives be the Mimitar? Because they do look like they have a Mimitar design. Yeah, I think I think they are. Uh, oh, men Matar Oh, the remote explosives are ore, which is the uh, mining faction. Ah, anti-tank weapons from mining people. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're just you can use remote explosives for lots of things. It's just yeah. it happens yeah, to no, be like killing vehicles and dust. Yeah, no, I meant like um, the anti-tank mine. It's literally, the ones like if a tank ran over them, explosion. Not like the remote explosives. Oh right, yeah, the proxy ones. Ah. Yeah. I could yeah, see them using weird. them to blow up asteroids and stuff. Hmm. But yeah, they're going to be like the sit at distance and do lots of damage. Which I like. It's kind of what they do now, but better. Yeah. And they're removing the god awful, um, was it plate and shield extender bonus? Yeah. That's like a bonus to modules when you have three module slots. Yeah, <laughs> when the standard version has no module slots whatsoever. Just two light weapons and an equipment. Yeah. Which makes it really easy to fit, but just... Yeah. Like Horrible this, variety. <laughs> yeah, and like a bonus to like those specifically. And it has two highs and you're like, I want to put damage mods on those. <laughs> And it doesn't have any self-repair, so you're like, oh, I guess I'll put yeah. a rep on it, which gets no bonus. So yeah, it's good that they're actually making them good. I'm wondering what they're going to do with the slot layout, if they're going to leave them with no yeah. slots. Because I really want to have slots. <laughs> I want to do things with commando suits that aren't, <laughs> like, terrible. Huh. So if commando suits get an equipment slot, so... What I'm interested to see is how many commandos are going to be throwing cloaks on these things. <laughs> That's true. Cloaked commando. Go up cloak behind the tank, uncloak, fire your missiles, cloak up again, run away. It's the stealth bombers of dust. <laughs> yes. Technically speaking, the Amar Scout would be really good at that. Yeah. Yeah. Just wouldn't get the damage bonus, but even so... Like, it would be able to recloak much faster. Huh. But yeah, I mean, like, there's not much else to say with the commanders other than, like, hooray, I guess. Yeah, like, well, it should yeah, be good yeah, for yeah, something. Support suit. Somewhere, somewhere, there's confetti and, like, small fireworks display and people clapping really for quietly. For the all eight commandos that are out there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in someone's cellar somewhere and they've got like cut out commando masks and everything. It's like, wow, these changes are amazing. I know. I would have brought alcohol to celebrate, but my mom won't let me drink. <laughs> okay. That's well, okay. We can use apple juice. We're getting to the arrow mark now. Uh, we're getting fairly close to the arrow mark, so I guess we'll just go through. The new sidearms are coming in. So that's the bolt pistol and the magsec SMG. So, Magsec would be, I think it's Galente. Oh, I have, um, no, I think they're the Kaldari ones, if okay. I'm correct, because uh, a while back I found um, a bunch of Dust 5 and 4 stuff on this site called CG Hub, and among them was um, the Magsec um, SMG and stuff. I'll link it now so you guys can have a look at it, and then you can put it in the description of the video. Okay. Uh, here we are. But I mean, other than uh, 
like that they're coming. I mean, there's a list of like what the skills do, and those are kick per level, damage per level, power grid per level, and uh, reload speed per level. So like the sort of standard skills you get for weapons. Yeah. I kind of find it weird that the pistol has a recoil. <laughs> like the skill of the operation skill for the bolt <laughs> pistol is for kick. So it kind of makes me wonder how this thing is going to operate. <laughs> That's true. You'd think it'd be for spread. Yeah. Probably be like, um, it'll be, have a really amazingly powerful kick, like, um, I think it was Bulletstorm that had it, or, um, was it Resistance 2? There was this pistol you could fire that, um, fire, it was a revolver that could fire like explosives. Mm. And it had a tremendous kick on it. Yeah. So I wonder if it's going to be more like a Magnum, I guess, maybe? No. Because, like, um, the Amar is, like, rapid fire, so. Well, which race is the ion pistol? Uh, well, the bolt the pistol bolt, is Kaldari. I just linked it uh, in um, Skype chat. The, all right, they're both Kaldari then. So, Kaldari the, Master Race. The long range SMG and the long range pistol. I don't understand the SMG though. It looks like it has a silencer on it. I think it does. That was another thing actually when I was looking yeah. at uh, an NA Cox scope. The MagSec description for the weapon said that it had you could have like a scope or a silencer, and that it would actually be quieter hmm. when you use a silencer. Hmm. Interesting. Actually, sorry, that's a holographic scope, not an ACOG. This they do cool, look very though. similar to each other. They do. Oh, well, I guess they're both Kaldari and they're both side arms. Yeah. Hmm. And the bolt pistol has a scope, at least in that picture you linked. Yeah, which is going to be interesting. That. That'll be cool. Long range pistol. I'm, I'm, I'm be like... curious to see how that actually works out. I think the Kaldari SMG. It'll probably be pretty cool. It'll probably be fun to run with on a scout suit. I used to like I run SMGs on my scout sometimes, and it works really well. But sometimes you need that extra range. Yeah. The thing with the pistol having the ACOG scope, it implies that I'm just going to speculate here, but it probably imply that it's more for like accuracy. Like you'll probably have a yeah. low clip size. Mm, yeah. yeah. And there might even be a damage. charge up. Yeah. Huh, probably be. There. If it is for accuracy, it will be interesting if they make it like um this revolver that's in Team Fortress Two that gives bonus for headshots. I can't remember what it is, but yeah, people like being accurate with the pistol. Yeah. Let's go with the current one actually does as well. Hasn't played. I've played TF2, but um, I mean the That'd scramble pistol gets a huge bonus to headshots right now. Yeah. Hmm. So I don't know. Like we'll have to see. Like all that we have right now is like it has a silencer, which I think is cool. That's going to be good for scouts. I think being able to like silently pick people off. Yeah. A gimbal. Mm hmm. Now have your hats. What? Play Team Fortress 2. Oh. <laughs> no. I knew you'd say that. You're like, what? Okay. Well, anyway, we've done scout. Well, not scout suits. We've done all suits and we've done the new weapons that kind of got leaked. What about Although that? they are talking about them soon. But, um, I guess the last topic I want to go on to before we wrap this up is the uh, PlayStation Now announced. Which yes. is the streaming service for PlayStation or I think all Sony devices at least. Because I know the Vita has it as well and tab they said tablets are going to have it and I actually don't know about PC that wasn't announced but a lot of people who have PCs and don't have any Sony products really want it will probably there. never come to PC because... Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about dust for PC then. No, the PlayStation <laughs> now. Technically <laughs> speaking, uh, anything that has... Uh, that's compatible with PlayStation Now would mean you could play dust on different devices. Yeah. You said every player, like, scream of glee, the possibility of playing dust. <laughs> Finally, there you go. That would be kind of funny, like seeing people have like a tablet on their desk or something, and just yeah. like a DualShock controller plugged into it. But yeah, I just thought that was like an interesting thing to end on, that 
like we could actually see dust being played on other uh, devices aside from the PS3. So yeah, that. when they when they said earlier, like whatever months ago, when they were laser focused on PS3 development, it kind of would make sense, you know, if dust did come to uh, this service. Yeah, and yeah, then you don't have to worry about development in other systems. The only thing I know that you actually need need is the uh, DualShock controller. Like it has to have. Uh, it's either the DualShock Four or the DualShock Three. I think you can use um, a DualShock 4 for Dust because I think it was Kane, wasn't it? He said on his Twitter or something he's used the Dual so- uh, DualShock. I know it didn't. I get the words out of my mouth. A special controller for the PlayStation 4 there because I can't get the words out of my mouth. Yeah, but I've thought to someone who's used it. Apparently, his DualShock is it 3 broke or DualShock 4 or whatever it's called. So uh, he had to get it sent back. But it, it does work. That's and everything it touches. <laughs> And yeah, like I'm just, I really want to know more. And like, I just thought it'd be well, a cool note to end yeah. on. Well, another uh, thing, uh, I can't remember who it was, but one of the CCP employees said they had a Steam box in their office. Mm, so that's true. Yeah. That could either be for the new EVR game, or it could be for um, Dust. PlayStation now comes to Steam box. That would be. That would be interesting. Amazing. That would be interesting. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Hmm. But anyway, uh, that's us for this week. Um, we're gonna... I'm gonna try and get these done weekly again. Because I like doing them. But I am a bit under the weather at the moment. And I get under the weather every year. So, keeping this do, a bit shorter... Uh, whatever. It was actually England <laughs> that caused me to become ill like this. So screw you. <laughs> Europeans. Yep. <laughs> but anyway, I'll be back next week, and yeah, uh, we're gonna like try and keep it to a couple of subjects every week. So, if there are more changes to this uh, next week, then we'll talk about those. Otherwise, I want to talk about patch one point seven and just like vehicle changes, and then after that, maybe CSM stuff. But yeah, thanks everybody for listening, and I will see you next week. You guys can say bye now. By the way. Bye. <laughs> Hello. Uh, bye.